Oh, good morning or nearly afternoon. My name is Walt Miner. I work for the Linux Foundation on uh, automotive grade Linux, primarily doing develop, developer management, community relations, things like that. Um, so, and I'm here to introduce automotive grade Linux and why it's changing the way automotive manufacturers build and manage software. So just a, a little bit about my background. Before I came to the uh, Linux Foundation to work on automotive grade Linux, I worked for uh, Motorola Automotive, Motorola Mobile Devices, um, Continental Automotive and their connectivity and infotainment group. And then I worked for Montevista's automotive group and helped Bosch launch the Cadillac Q program. So I've seen a lot of different uh, OEMs and tier ones in action over the years. And they, the culturally, these guys don't, they don't share. There's never been an incentive to share. It's a, it's a, it's a dog eat dog, especially among the tier ones, getting that uh, work uh, from the OEMs. And so it's interesting in AGL, that this is the first time I've seen tier ones and OEMs cooperating with each other and working on the same software, sitting in the same room at times. Last year I was in Yokohama before our, about six weeks before our CES demo in Las Vegas. And we had about 15 developers sitting there from seven or eight different companies, including Denso and Panasonic and Toyota and Pioneer and to see really these, these dog-eat-dog competitors sitting there working on the same piece of software, working towards the same goal, really to me brings home the fact that AGL is really about collaborating to, br to build the car of the future um, amongst these competitors and doing that through rapid innovation. So that's our tagline, but I really do believe that that's what we're, that's what we're accomplishing within within AGL and within these companies. Uh, Dan Kaushi is the uh, general manager for automotive grade Linux. He's my boss. And I wrote down this quote from Automotive Linux, Linux Summit last year in Japan. If Linux is in the car, we want it to be based on AGL, no matter what the function. So we're the only organization that's really trying to it's really planning to address IVI or in-vehicle infotainment, instrument cluster, telematics, HUD, uh, various control systems, and ADAS with Linux. And in my own experience, I've delivered uh, with tier ones and with uh, tier twos, I've delivered IVI systems, telematics systems, and uh, other uh, control systems all based on Linux to various uh, tier ones and OEMs. So it can be done. AGL is changing the future of driving. We have eight major OEMs now that are working with us that are members of AGL, including, uh, they're all listed here, but especially Toyota has been a very long time member as well as ja Jaguar Land Rover. And uh, this year we've had Ford, Mazda, Subaru, and Nissan take on larger roles within AGL. So it's been a very exciting time of growth. We have, uh, as of the time of this slide, which was back at the ALS time, we had 76 members. Since then, we've had four or five members join as well, so I didn't get a chance to update the logos on this slide. But we have about 80 or 81 members now. And we have uh, five platinum members, uh, two gold members, and a large number of silver and bronze members within AGL. So really, we, we're changing the industry, uh, creating a new software development methodology for, for automotive, across automotive, using open source. Uh, Jim Zemlin the other day in his keynote said that Linux represents the greatest uh, collective investment in collaborative software in the history of the industry, and we're leveraging that in AGL. Um, <clears throat> we, are, we really are changing the way automotive manufacturers build manage and treat software as opposed to everybody trying to build their own closed box, trying to collab we're collaborating amongst tier ones and tier twos to bring that software across the industry. Um, 
and we will change the way consumers interact with their vehicle, the way OEMs interact with their design process and their creation process of the vehicle, and the way vehicles interact with the cloud as we bring IoT and open connectivity features into the, into the ecosystem. <clears throat> HGL is bringing a standardized open operating system and application framework that's not under the control of any one company within the eco within the within AGL. We have a lot of we have participation across the board. We're very much a code first organization. Uh, people have been bringing in code, uh, getting it accepted by the community, and really collaborating amongst the various companies on on the common bits of software. And that collaboration is, is really enabling companies to develop their own applications and with their own look and feel. I've seen this, I've seen this at AGL or at, at ALS, I was really surprised at the number of different companies and the number of different applications that companies had written. And I really truly had no idea that some of, these, some of this work was underway. And they were showing some really uh, fantastic applications that, based on AGL's uh, ecosystem in the very short time we've had it available. Um, one, one, question I, one question we get a lot, and this is really the only place I'll address it, is you know, there's another um, open source collaborative project uh, called Genevi out there that's been around since about 2009. And really, AGL and Genevi, we're collaborating on software components where it's appropriate. Genevi has a much different um, governance model. It's very much bring your own platform. They've got a very detailed compliance spec. Uh, there's multiple different instances and implementations of the Genevi software. Even within Genevi, they've got multiple different baselines. Uh, AGL is a single baseline, a single distribution, one code base. Uh, we're building a complete distribution, including middleware and an app framework. And the idea is that the OEMs and tier ones and anybody else will use, the same, will use that same software base as their starting point for their products, and they'll, use, they'll be able to differentiate based on that. So we really are organized, and we run, like a, I hope, like a standard open source project. And I'll show you some of the ways that we do that. About, well, it's been about 14 months ago at, AL, at the Automotive Linux Summit in uh, 2015 in Tokyo, in, Ju in July of 2015, we announced that we would start collaborating on a uh, unified code base. And we made the first release of that unified code base in January uh, as part of our uh, CES demonstration in Las Vegas. And the goal of the unified code base of AGL is to bring the best of Tizen IVI, which was another competing uh, open source project that's more or less gone defunct, um, Genevi, and other open source bits into a single code base that the entire industry could use and collaborate, on, collaborate around. We're really aiming to reduce fragmentation and focus on innovation and bring new features into the automotive space. And the one, one real differentiation between us and, say, Tizen was we're using Yocto and, and Pocky. At the time, Tizen was using um, open build system, OBS. Um, so we're bringing together the best pieces of what was out there and what's out there in open source and putting them together and making them work together as part of the AGL unified code base. We have a, <clears throat> I'm not gonna show it here, we have a video of the demo from uh, CES. The exciting thing about that, we got a lot of feedback from longtime Geneva members. We put this together in about four months late last year, and we had not just the usual, hey, here's, the, here's a board, here's a display, but we had some real open, we had some real automotive components in there. We had an H, a, a simulated HVAC system with fans and actuators for moving the doors of your, uh, of your air conditioning and your heating system. And we were able to, we had a, a most ring 
doing 5.1 audio. And you can see all that on the video. Uh, we, we put that together in a pretty short amount of time. We had 14 different companies that contributed code to that effort and a number of different companies that contributed to the hardware build as well. So it was very exciting to see that come together. We continued that, we extended that, demo, that demonstrator for Automotive Linux Summit. We showed that in Tokyo last month and um, we'll continue to build upon that. We've added more automotive type hardware to the to the demonstrator. We now have a, a BMW style iDrive controller that we're, we've added. Um, and we, we were adding, we've added a, a, rear, a rear seat display so we can show video in the rear seat as well as the traditional uh, navigation and multimedia and other applications in the front seat. So We also extended the, in, in, at ALS, we also extended the number of boards that we support. We were using the, we've been using the Renaissance Porter board, which is the RCAR M2 board for our, for our main demonstrations. But we found as we approached ALS in January or July that a number of other companies had boards that they were running AGL on, including TI and NXP, um, and then a surprising number, I think we had uh, nine or 10 different companies with different homegrown apps that they were running on top of the AGL distribution. Everything from somebody, a company that was running a, a Miracast type application where they had a, a smartphone and they were showing exactly the same thing on the main display of the vehicle as they were on the smartphone people adapting their own UIs to the AGL distribution. It was very exciting to see a lot, of the, a lot of the progress that people were making with the code. So one thing that people demanded was that I come up with a name for the releases because they didn't like things like UCB 1.0. So um, I, of course, came up with Fish. So uh, the Brilliant Blowfish release we just made uh, so that was the 2.0 release. We made that in July. Um, Charming Chinook, a Chinook is a salmon, for those of you who don't know, um, is coming out in January. And I'll show a little bit more of the, the roadmap and what we've accomplished. We released Brilliant Blowfish in July. That, has a, that uses Yocto 2.0 as the baseline. And as I said, we were using, we were using um, Renaissance's Porter board as our main board in the initial release, in the uh, Agile Albacore release. We added some additional BSPs. We have Kimu support, which we've had from the beginning. We added an audio manager, uh, layer, a better layer manager, and uh, autom automated test improvements to the, to the release. We also have the initial version of our application framework in there, and some better vehicle messaging, vehicle signaling as well. So in our, in our build system, we now have a reference BSP. I'll explain there what we consider a reference BSP and a, and a community BSP in a second. We have reference BSPs from Renaissance and Kimu as well as the, the Minnow Board Max from Intel. And we now have other BSPs that we've added. Uh, we, we call them community BSPs because they're basically their best effort by the community, including uh, BSPs from NXP, from the Jacinto 6 from TI, the Qualcomm Dragon Board, Raspberry Pi, and we've had interest expressed from a number of other companies to add their boards either as community BSPs or from some of these companies like NXP and TI to upgrade their status from community to reference boards. So when we when we, call, when, when we consider something a reference board for, for AGL, um, this is, I know this is a little wordy and might be hard to see, but um, the BSP is available as part of the core distribution. Um, it's a BSP that's actively being maintained by the silicon vendor or the board vendor. Um, we've, got a, we've got documentation and a kickstart guide available so you can get the code downloaded uh, from our website or as a um, pre-built binary, get it onto the board, get it running very quickly. Uh, we'll have an SDK released and maintained. 
we have the manufacturer supplying at least two boards for our continuous integration team and automated test infrastructure. Uh, you'll see daily snapshot builds available for those boards. And we are working with the companies to set up uh, test and uh, QA remote nodes so that we can, we can, those companies can both provide some internal resources for testing the boards and we can access the boards remotely. So the community boards may be hobbyist boards like the Raspberry Pi. Uh, they may be older automotive specific boards that are no longer sponsored or maintained by the manufacturer of the board. Um, generally, there'll be best effort by the AGL community to continue the maintenance of those BSPs. And we may have a, a featured B, a community BSP that's uh, proposed by the community and designated by our system architecture team. We're still working on what exactly that means, but we, we, would, provide, prob we would probably provide some more uh, resources for testing and validating that BSP against the uh, AGL release. And um, a complete list of all the boards that are available and where to access the source code and download the binaries is available on our wiki site that I have listed there. And I'll have all these slides uploaded to the uh, um, event page right after the presentation here. <clears throat> Coming up in January, we've got our charming Chinook release that uh, we'll have we're upgrading, we're in the process right now of upgrading to Yocto 2.1, which is the version that just came out in uh, May. We'll have additional reference AGL apps with uh, an AGL compositor, um, home, a home screen reference app available in both Qt and in HTML5. I, I guess I can't spell HTML. Um, we'll have a device profile definitely for te telematics as well as IVI. Uh, we may have one for instrument cluster and ADAS, where that's still to be determined. Uh, our IP network manager, uh, Conman, is already in the build. It was in the, the Brilliant Blowfish release, but we'll have some um, reference applications on accessing the co connection manager and uh, device management profiles built on top of Conman in the, in the January timeframe as well. We added uh, Smack as part of Brilliant Blowfish and as part of our initial application framework. So we're working on uh, hardening that and, and making sure we've got the, the correct configuration for Smack uh, based on our requirements. And that'll continue to evolve throughout this year as we uh, get to the Charming Chinook release. And then we have some work that we're carrying over from uh, the Blowfish release that we didn't quite finish. Uh, audio manager plugins for Pulse Audio. Uh, we have some available already. Um, in the Blowfish release, we'll be adding more. Uh, we'll be completing our security specification. So exactly what a developer or an OEM can expect from AGL as part of the security, as, as part of the application framework. What kind of ap application lifecycle can you expect? What kind of security can you expect in terms of automotive bus isolation? Um, we're, aiming to, we're aiming to finish that security spec in the next month. We have a, an AGL all member meeting coming up in Munich in two weeks, and we'll be work, continuing to work on that, and hopefully uh, we'll have that available as a, an alpha version coming up in the next uh, month or so. So <clears throat> we're working on getting a software development kit out there. Uh, we want to have it available for our reference boards with published images that includes the graphics drivers. Uh, the graphics drivers have usually proven to be the sticking point. There's us they're usually uh, closed source and have click-through licenses that are difficult for us to redistribute, but we're working with our, our, our members and our board suppliers to be able to redistribute those graphics drivers into in pre-built binaries. 
And the goal that we've set out is we want to be able to have an, uh, a developer be able to download the code, have an app, have the board on their, their desk, um, be able to download the SDK and write a hello world application and get it on their board uh, and run that in less than one hour. Um, my personal experience with this was in the uh, uh, Agile Albacore timeframe, that was about three days of, uh, of painful uh, downloading and building and going through the process. And um, really, uh, uh, to get from three days to one hour, I think, will be a fantastic achievement. And right now, we, we're down significantly under, under, under a day, but we're not down to an hour yet. So how's the code structured? So we wanted to, we want people to be able to readily determine what, the question we get, we get asked frequently is, okay, so what is AGL? So we want people to be able to know what is, you know, what is the, the core thing that it is that you need to have in your box in order for it to be considered AGL. So um, we, we created, a, we created a layer called Meta AGL that, in Yocto that builds upon Pocky and has the AGL reference BSPs included, um, any additional AGL code in, the, you know, in terms of middleware above and beyond Pocky, any tooling, any build scripts that we have that are specific to AGL. Um, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, the test results are, we have, a, we have an AGL test framework that's based on the LTSI uh, Fuego test framework. We have uh, test results that are based on that that we can provide. And we'll, we will base it, we'll fully support that with updates for at least six months. So the Brilliant Blowfish release came out in mid-July. We've had our first patch release already, 2.0.1 and we have another patch release planned for next week. So we are supporting that with, uh, with fixes. Um, and we'll continue that for, until at least the, the Chinook release comes out and probably a little longer beyond that. Then we needed, to, we needed a mechanism for enabling optional and experimental features because one of the <clears throat> great questions that came up or that's come up amongst our members is, I, you know, this application frame you're working on, it's interesting, but I don't want to use it. I want to use my own. So uh, can we make that an, an optional feature? And can we, can we ensure that you can choose those optional features that you want to build in your specific environment? So we had to, we had to do a little bit of work um, on creating a mechanism in both the Yocto layers and in the build system so that you could pick those optional features that you wanted. So uh, we have the, a, a layer called Meta AGL Extra. Uh, we're providing the app framework, uh, device profiles, and things like that as part of the uh, Meta AGL Extra layer. And I'll show in a minute how you can select the various uh, optional features, the extra features that you might want. Because there's also, in addition to that, uh, community development. So the, typically the extra features will be the features that are officially in our roadmap, officially being supported by the AGL uh, advisory board and the AGL membership. But we're also finding that there's people who are building features or building um, packages on top of the AGL build that they want to contribute, and we needed a place to be able to build those and, and share those so that people could work on them together and collaborate. So we created this AGL, meta AGL devil or developer layer. Um, we have snapshot builds, daily snapshot builds that we provide for, the, for meta AGL and meta AGL extra. Uh, we may at some point provide some snapshot builds for the uh, community layers. Uh, right now we're not, but we certainly could think about it. We're, we're still expanding out our, our uh, CI infrastructure and being able to handle more builds. So we'll, we'll be able to do that in the future, in the very near future. These may be community BSPs that don't have official support would, would be in that layer. 
Um, and so it's, it's really allowing uh, some companies and some, some individuals in some cases to build on top of AGL and collaborate with others who might be interested in their, that, area of ex, that area of expertise that they might have or that area of interest that they might have. And then finally, <clears throat> from the beginning, we've had this, uh, this area called Meta AGL uh, demo for the demonstrator code. So you can, all of our demonstrators for uh, ALS, for CES, for anything that's upcoming, that's all available for download. You can download that and use it, build it and use it. Uh, we're providing binaries in some case, in most cases as well. So really the AGL demonstrator is, code is, is really intended for kind of one shot uh, demonstrator type uses, usage. In some cases, we've built upon the, you know, one demonstrator into the next demonstrator, but uh, it's provided as is. Um, but there's some interesting stuff going on there as well. So like I said, we're release management, we're providing a release twice a year, a full release twice a year, as well as patch releases on a uh, regular basis. Um, for the core distribution and extra feature, features, we'll basically provide all, all the code and tooling with test results. Um, the community features and the, demonstra the demonstrator apps will be provided as is. Um, we may, as our members the turn to using AGL in production, there may be a use case we can see for longer term support for a given release. Uh, that'll be determined by the advisory board as we move forward. But at, at this point, no, none of the releases have been selected for uh, longer term support because we're still in the, the build out phase of the, of the software. Oops. So this is just a summary of the, <clears throat> of the octo layers that I was describing as we went through here. We, we also created in, in Meta AGL uh, a Meta IVI common layer. That's uh, what, we're, what we're intending to do there is to allow somebody like Genevi to come in and build their uh, Genevi code on top of AGL by providing a common layer that between Meta uh, IVI Common and, and Pocky, they could then build on top of that and, and have their Genevi specific stuff and still be built in the same fashion off of, uh, off of AGL with the same BSPs and the same other base code. So to, to find the code, uh, we have pre-built binaries and source tarballs available. Uh, at uh, that on our website, uh, I'll basically I'll, I'll update that. I keep updating that website whenever we have a new release, and then you can find uh, instructions on how to download the latest source code uh, from from Garrett uh, on our wiki at that at that address, and that will list that by board. And then the build options, like I had said, we, we didn't really have the tooling for being able to build out the extras or the um, optional features. So recently we came up with a, we had a, 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 a script, we recently revised our, our script for selecting the features. And if you, once you have the repos set up, the instructions are on that wiki page that I just pointed out to you. Um, you can run the AGL setup script with uh, the dash help, dash H, and it'll give you all, a list of all of the options that you have for uh, various extra features or machine support that you might want. And as an example, uh, if you run that um, command, that will build you the, uh, uh, the Kimu version of the AGL demo that we showed last month at ALS. Uh, but you could also run, you could also build that for the Porter board, for, any, for the Minnow board max. There's other optional features that you can run. Um, 
and they're all listed in that, that help file, as well as on our wiki. We've been trying to document, keep the, keep the wiki up to date, but as you guys know, uh, developers don't always uh, update the documentation in a timely fashion, so. Um, and there's also the usual uh, readme.md files in the, in the repos as well. So this is just another summary of, uh, of what we just went over in terms of <clears throat> what's available in terms of QA and release support and daily builds for uh, the different, for the different uh, Yocto layers. So I know you're all excited about automotive. How do I get involved? So we have a wiki site. Um, it, we try to keep it up to date. I think we're doing an OK job of that. Um, we have a single sign-on using Linux Foundation identities. This was a recent change. We used to have a separate AGL identity, uh, but now we're managing it all through the, the Linux Foundation identities. Um, basically, the single sign-on gets you access to uh, Jira, Git, Garrett, uh, Doors NG, which we're using for requirements, and I'm, we're trying to deprecate, and the AGL wiki. So you can, you can view. You can view any of those without the account. You can uh, submit issues in Jira. You can submit defect. You can submit patches in Garrett, et cetera, or update the wiki if you have the account. So you don't need the account in order to download or see anything. You need the account if you want to, uh, if you want to participate, you want to add something. We have a mail list. It's, um, you can sign up for the mail list at that address. Um, we also have a number of people on IRC uh, at Hash Automotive. So if you have any quick questions you want answered, uh, there's usually people hanging out there who can uh, jump in and answer them. Just a, a quick uh, couple slides about our, our mail list. So we, at the end of 2014, the end of 2014 is when we really were about to make our first release. The mail list was kind of stagnant. Uh, we had 110% growth last year in uh, 2014 on our main mailing list, which is the automotive discussions one. And uh, so we've, and then even this year, we've had another 25% growth. So we now have 579 subscribers compared to uh, just over 200 at the end of when we first started this effort. So mailing list traffic, uh, you can see automotive discussions was uh, pretty poorly um, used. <laughs> Initially, we only had 81 messages in all of 2014, and uh, that's now grown quite a bit. So the traffic should double again this year in 2016. Um, so there's a lot of interesting things going on in the mail list in terms of um, I send out status updates, um, people send out you know, requests for information in terms of how do I do this. It's the usual, the usual stuff that you'll see on a mail list, but it's become, uh, it's become quite active, and I think, I think people there are also ready to jump on things and, and help out if you have any kind of problems with building or, or getting things to work. We, need, uh, we have a weekly developer call every Tuesday at uh, 1300 uh, European time, or UTC rather. And uh, the information is on our wiki, how to dial in. Anybody is welcome. Uh, I run that call every week. We, we need, this is my, uh, shameless, uh, my shameless plug here. We need uh, app developers, of course, and many, you know, numerous subsystems can use, could use some help, um, particularly, uh, audio, graphics, um, browser, uh, those are probably the main ones that we need. we're looking for help at this point, and the app framework. We're doing a lot of work on the app framework. So, um, And then we have JIRA. You can check JIRA for our, our, current our current project roadmap in terms of what projects are active. And we're also using it for defect tracking, things like that. So. 
Our contribution, pro our code, our de development process is also documented on our wiki. Um, and again, as we uh, continue to, we'll continue to evolve that as we uh, mature and as we add more developers. I'm trying not to build out a huge process for, you know, trying to scale the process as we go along as opposed to building a very onerous process for 20 people, you know. Um, we don't need a huge, you know, we don't need the same kind of processes that say the Linux kernel has with thousands of developers as you need for the small, much smaller number that we have. So obviously we're using Git for version control. Uh, we use Garrett for code reviews and for managing the um, submissions. Uh, and there's the addresses for where you can find those. And again, we're using the Linux Foundation identity for logging onto those and for submissions. So this is just a description of uh, how we set up our Garrett. Basically, we have uh, meta, we have a, an a, AGL area which contains the build scripts and the recipes for building the distribution, and then we have some source code repos for where we where we're housing any code that's being developed specifically for AGL. Obviously, we're using a, we're reusing a lot of code from elsewhere. Uh, most of our code is housed elsewhere, and we're not attempting to mirror all that. That would be, that would be pointless. So uh, the source and staging repos are fairly small. Um, and again, a complete description in the links can all be found in the wiki, on the wiki site. We're using uh, Jenkins for continuous integration. Uh, basically, any, any submission made to Garrett is automatically built by Jenkins, and Jenkins can, can give a plus or minus one based on whether the build passes or fails. Uh, so we, don't, we won't integrate anything unless the build passes. Um, we're also providing daily snapshot builds for the reference BSPs, and um, that's the link. There's, I gave you the link before for the uh, website where you can get to the, um, it'll, it'll, it'll lead you to the to snapshot builds. That's actually the direct website to the snapshots, and you can get every daily, every daily build there that you may want. We're using, like I said before, we're using Fuego um, for automated testing. We have a pretty vibrant and large community working on both improving Fuego itself and committing test cases and running test cases. And there's a lot more information about that uh, on our wiki site at the uh, test framework site. And I would say they, that's, that's been a, a huge help in terms of the number of people contributing and the number of test cases and what, they're, what they've been finding for us. So just uh, one last thing. So we're kind of, our governance, we're kind of structured into some expert groups as well as uh, we have a system, we have a, basically a system architecture team and some expert groups, but I hate the name expert group because you don't have to be an expert to be in the expert group. Um, really, it's a team working in a specific area of, of AGL. And <clears throat> in many cases, there may be component teams that own software that's not specifically assigned to an expert group. Really, the expert groups are working on more advanced features or working on features that we need to add to the, we need to add to the system. So each team has a dedicated wiki page, um, and you can see those directly from the, the home page of the wiki. Um, just a quick run through, we have an application framework and security expert group. So this group is working on completing the application framework this year, um, working on the security framework and the security spec that, we, that I mentioned earlier. And then each of these expert groups kind of has maybe some areas that are, don't seem obviously part of their remit. Um, what we've done is, 
uh, what, we, what we've purposely chosen to do is if there's a, an area, let's say software update, that has interest, but maybe there's only two people interested in it, we're not gonna create an expert group with two people in it. So we were trying to maintain some kind of critical mass in the groups of at least five to 10 interested parties. Um, so what I, in these slides, the areas that you see in green are really the areas that are the major focus for that group. This is another extremely active group, the UI and graphics expert group. They're looking at creating an AGL compositor, uh, layer manager, and uh, GPU interface. They've also got the uh, multimedia uh, manager, including multi working on multiple display and display sharing within AGL. They also own the uh, audio manager, which doesn't really seem like an obvious fit, but it was somewhere to put it. Browser engine, speech recognition, and navigation. We've had proposals recently to create a speech rec and a navigation expert group. Um, I'm not sure we have critical mass for that, but uh, this again is more in the, in terms of creating APIs for these or creating interfaces to a, to speech en to a speech engine or to a navigation engine. We're not looking to create an open source navigation engine at this point. Uh, it's, it's beyond our, our capabilities. But we would like, our, our, our OEMs and our tier ones would like the ability to say, substitute different speech engines or different navigation engines and have a consistent API that their suppliers can use. The connectivity expert group, mostly they've been focusing on vehicle connectivity and network and vehicle firewalls. Uh, they're starting, they've been also looking at some cloud connectivity, uh, smart device link, which is the uh, Ford developed uh, interface to a, a smartphone that they're open sourcing. Uh, Toyota's also been involved with that. So the, the connectivity expert group has a lot of different uh, places to participate as well. And then finally, the continuous integration and automated test group. Uh, they've been really hard at work at building, on building out both the Jenkins infrastructure, uh, the build infrastructure, daily snapshot builds, and then uh, a sub-team within that has been working very hard on uh, uh, test environments and Fuego and getting Lava set up or something like it that'll allow us to test rem boards remotely and not have to have all of our boards sitting in a single location. So uh, th this group's been making a heck of a lot of progress and, uh, but of, of course can always use some more help. So um, that was all the slides I had and uh, we still have uh, about five minutes left if anybody has any questions that I can evade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't hear any stuff about managing. Can you talk about what you plan on to help support that and maybe navigating around the main uh, of the Yeah. So the question was about, just to repeat the question, the question was about can, what we plan to do about it, and uh, navigating around the, uh, there's a lot of different uh, pr proprietary uh, messaging and implementations around CAN. So as a former tier one employee, I can tell you that I spent a lot of time working on most, which is um, similar issues to CAN in that, you know, electrically the spec is pretty simple and at the application level it's either in CAN's case, it just isn't there. Every, every OEM has their own uh, application layer. Most it's there, but the function catalogs are very inconsistent from OEM to OEM. And <coughs> right now what we're looking at providing is uh, a consistent messaging interface to abstract the, the, the messaging of CAN uh, away 
So we were, we were initially using Automotive Message Broker, which was uh, developed by Intel as part of Tizen IVI. And we found that it, doesn't have, it didn't have the security built in that we really felt was needed in order to isolate the bus. Uh, so we're mostly looking at, at this point, bus isolation, you know, not allowing rogue applications to access the bus or rogue uh, middleware to access the buses. Um, we do have, in the demonstrators, we do have a very simple CAN interface uh, based on some work that, that Microchip has done. But it's not, it doesn't at all deal with the, you know, multi-vehicle scenario and, uh, you know, where an OEM has seven different message sets for different vehicles. We see, what we hear from the OEMs is that CAN will probably continue to either be a separate, a dedicated vehicle processor, um, not Linux-based for the time being, or it'll be in a, uh, a container or a, more likely a virtual machine w running a separate operating system. Uh, we had some, we've had some talks with Autosar about you know, how we can collaborate with Autosar on, on their CAN specific stuff. I think right now we're mostly focusing at the messaging level and not at the um, physical CAN interface level. I'd like to get there. Uh, most will probably be more directly on the bus. Um, that's, the way, that's the way the stuff that we have implemented so far works. And the good news about most is Microchip open sourced their most driver, which is part of the AGL distribution. So going forward, you can just plug in their, their most chip and the driver will be available. It's in the four dot, it's in the latest kernel even. Um, so I think most is, is much closer to what you'd consider a real open source solution than can will be in the, any time in the near future. Yeah. In the back. Motor, I love motorcycles. For those of you who don't know, and maybe if you don't follow me on Twitter, because you probably don't, I actually rode my motorcycle here from Chicago. So, um, yes, we've actually had some talks with um, some boat people, some boat manufacturers or some boat equipment manufacturers about incorporating AGL into their stuff. Um, I know that Harley Davidson had a, I don't own a Harley Davidson, but Harley Davidson had a uh, fairly complex um, IVI system that uh, somebody built up. I don't, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't remember. I think it was Becker, uh, Harmon Becker. Um, but yeah, I do, I do see us going in that direction. Pardon me? We do, we have some aftermarket suppliers that are members. Certainly, I, I, actually, if I, were, if I were an aftermarket vendor, I would be very interested in it, but um, <coughs> especially on the, um, the multimedia side and the networking side, it, it's, you know, Linux to me seems like an obvious way to save, uh, save costs and save schedule. Um, Yeah, if anybody wants me to test drive their racing vehicles, I'm, I'm here for them. <laughs> Anything else? You guys hungry? You want to go eat lunch? Okay, well, that's it then. Thank you. <laughs>